Okay, right, number 10, a circular clock face, centre zero, has the minute hand, OA, so this line, o, OA here is the minute hand, um, and the hour hand is OB. We've got some length, so the minute hand is 10 centimetres, so I'll label it up here, that's the minute hand, and we know that the hour hand is 7 centimetres long. Calculate the length of AB, now AB is from obviously the end of one end of the hand to the other. So I'm kind of cutting across here, actually. A to B. Alright, so we've got like a little triangle there. Let me redraw that out for you. So I'm looking at kind of like a, uh, a triangle here with um, 10 and 7. Um, calculate the length of AB, uh, AB being, oh, don't run the wrong way here, haven't I? So A and B. That's kind of the diagram we've got, and O in the middle. Give your answer to three significant figures. Um, so, triangle, two sides, an angle, working out another length. It's not going to be Pythagoras, it's not right angled. It looks like it might be. So, if we haven't got what's called a matching pair, and I can probably work this angle out actually here because it's on a clock face, isn't it? And how many, a, a circle has up to 360, so the whole clock is 360. And it's divided into 12 sections because we've got 1 to 12 going around the outside, so divided by 12. So we know each section, each section is worth 360 divided by 12. That's going to give us 30. 30 degrees. So this is 30 degrees. This section here is between 1 and 2 is 30. There is 30. And we know that adds up because then we get to 3 o'clock and that's going to be a right angle. So that's 90. So we know we're on the right lines. 120. 150. So this angle here is 150 degrees. Pop that into our diagrams. We haven't got what's called a matching pair. So we don't know a side and the opposite angle. So we know 7, but we don't know the opposite angle to 7. We know 10, but we don't know the opposite angle to 10. And we know the angle 150, but we don't know the, the side length here. So this is not going to be the sine rule. You need a matching pair for that. This is going to be the cosine rule. The cosine rule is um, a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a, all right, and you need to um, learn that really. That used to be given to you, but this year it is not. So that's going in the memory bank, please. So try and learn that. You always want to label your side that you're looking for as the A, because the formula is set up to work out A. So ignore all of these labels. Get rid of A, get rid of B, and let's get rid of O. Okay, this is now A, because I'm looking for this side. I want this side. And then it doesn't matter, I'm going to call this side B, this side C, alright? So, that's what I'm going to do, change it slightly, so then it fits my formula. I would always do that, always relabel the sides to make the unknown one A. Right then, so A squared equals B, or well side B is 10, so that's 10 squared, plus side C, which I've labelled over here, 7, 7 squared, minus 2 lots of, B times C, so let me just think, B was 10, and um, C was 7, brackets means times, that's just the way I like to multiply things together, cos of the angle, which was the cos of A, so the angle opposite A is 150, the one we worked out. Alright, and if you pop that into your calculator, you should, you should end up with and I'm hoping you end up with um, 270.24, okay, and then obviously this is the square of A, so this is the square of this side here, and to work out the length we must do the opposite of the square root, get rid of the squaring, so square root 270.24 is going to be um, 16.4 rounded up, and I've rounded it to 
um, three significant figures. So there was, it was a decimal and I've rounded that up. Okay. Hopefully that's useful. Learn the cosine rule.